Richard Dawkins claims that God is a delusion and that religious faith is the root of all evil. But what if the scientific evidence is telling a different story? Over the past 50 years, scientists have made a series of remarkable discoveries which show that the universe we live in is a very unlikely place. The universe is precisely adjusted to make our lives possible. Scientists call this cosmic fine-tuning. And at least some of them are now admitting that this points to the universe being deliberately designed as a place for us to live. Could this be genuinely new evidence for a God who created us? We've brought together a lineup of experts to help answer this question. Here in the ancient city of Durham, we talk to David Wilkinson. He's the principal of St John's College. He's also a scientist who studied how stars and galaxies are formed. I'm not the type of child who built a telescope at the age of four or anything like that. It took me a long time to get into science. Um, I was pretty good at mathematics at school. Uh, and then when it came to choosing university, I took the easy option and thought, well, physics wouldn't require a great deal of work. Uh, it allowed me plenty of time to play cricket. But what happened at university was that just before coming up to university, I became a Christian. I also found myself with this um, new degree in physics. And the first two courses that were taught in those days were quantum theory and relativity. Those are the first two things. This was very, very different from the kind of stuff that I'd done at school. And I began to get excited with some of the big questions in physics and cosmology, alongside uh, my own Christian faith beginning to emerge. And the two uh, questioned each other, enriched each other. And part of my fascination for, in cosmology is the big questions that physics poses. But it's also the sense that uh, here physics and science were beginning to tell me uh, something of what this creator God had actually made. Uh, and therefore had a, a value in itself because of that. And over years then, as I moved into research in astrophysics, uh, those things have always enriched each other. Here in the world-famous University of Cambridge, John Polkinghorne was Professor of Mathematical Physics. He gave this up to become a minister in the Church of England, and then later he came back to Cambridge, where he became the president of Queen's College. I very much enjoyed being a theoretical physicist, and I thought of it as being a sort of Christian vocation to use such talents as I had. But unfortunately, in these mathematically-based subjects, you don't get better as you get older. You don't do your best work before you're 25, usually, but almost certainly by 45, you've made most of the contribution you can. So after 25 years in theoretical physics, I thought I'd done my bit for the subject and I'd do something else. And the, because Christianity has always been central to my life, the idea of seeking ordination seemed the right next step. Also in Cambridge, Rodney Holder is course director with the Faraday Institute at St Edmunds College. He's been both an astrophysicist and a vicar. Well, I started by reading mathematics here in Cambridge and then moved to Oxford to do a doctorate and a couple of years postdoctoral research in astrophysics. Um, I had a wonderful supervisor, um, Dennis Sharma, who had been an inspiration lecturing in, the, in, in mathematics um, in Cambridge in uh, such areas as general relativity and, um, uh, and so on, and, um, and cosmology. So. Uh, I moved to study under him when he moved to Oxford and I was studying a very 
uh, well, rather specialized problem to do with um, galaxies and the later stages of galaxy evolution, the creation of intergalactic gas um, by, the, by, by our own galaxy in particular. The port of Southampton is world famous as the home of the great cruise liners, and this is where we found philosopher and writer Peter Williams. My name is uh, Peter Williams and I'm a, a Christian philosopher, uh, working a lot of my time uh, with a Christian educational charity called the Damaris Trust, uh, through whom I spend quite a lot of my time working with A-level students in schools around the country doing conferences on uh, philosophy and, and ethics and spirituality. I'm also an author uh, for various websites and publishers and um, my most recent book was called A Skeptic's Guide to Atheism which is a response to the uh, New Atheist movement. Here at Southampton University, Graham Swinnard is a space scientist. He talks about how this new evidence played a part in his journey to faith. Yeah, I've been working in spacecraft engineering, uh, both in industry and at university, for some years now. So um, uh, I'm currently working in this School of Engineering Sciences here at the University of Southampton, where I teach spacecraft design and spacecraft engineering. My research interests are um, wide, um, but more recently focused on the problems of orbital debris. When we operate in space, we leave, we leave junk in orbit, basically. And those pieces of junk are not like pieces of junk you find on the floor, which are static. They're moving around at about seven or eight kilometers per second. So it becomes a problem because they can intersect other spacecraft orbits and cause damage to people and, and hardware. So what do scientists mean when they say the universe is just right for us, or the impression of design is overwhelming? Probably the most famous scientist in the world today is Stephen Hawking. He puts it like this. The laws of science as we know them at present contain many fundamental numbers. The remarkable fact is that the values of these numbers seem to have been very finely adjusted to make possible the development of life. Next time, our experts will give us some specific examples of cosmic fine-tuning. <laughs>